Okay, with the Octarius release, Gene Stealers were looking pretty good, especially with a Broodlord to get those saves up and offer some to hit penalties to help them get across No Man's Land and into the fray. Plus, with a Void Crown, the Broodlord throwing out Psychic Scream or maybe a Catalyst that can't be denied if you've got a 9 plus. Right, let's snag that start collecting Tyranid box set I've been eyeing, especially because, as they said on Maelstrom Gaming, it may be vanishing in the not too distant future. First up, getting rid of the mold lines by scraping with an X-Acto knife at 90 degrees or so to the plastic. There are lots and lots of parts to clean up, and some of the lines were pretty distinct, so it took longer than with some other models to sort them all out. Also, I didn't realise what else came with the box. In addition to the Broodlord and the Gene Stealers and the Big Fella, you get four nodes and a couple of Spine Fist Rippers. You know, I just thought Rippers were simply not being made anymore. I didn't realise that loads of boxes, especially the Infantry Swarm stuff, chuck you the little guys with every purchase. So just by collecting Tyranids, you default acquire Rippers as you go. Assembling the Gene Stealers was lots of fun choosing poses and making little subtle differences between them, I went with scything talons and rending claws. You also get a choice of heads. I didn't like the face full of tendrils that look very Lictor or Cthulhu-esque, and so chose the more humanoid ones. The Broodlord was a bit more straightforward, but I didn't realise that the weird capillary tower thingy it was posing on is actually part of the model. I thought it was going to be something custom or maybe optional, but nope, the big guy is mounted on it. Okay, he's going to be benefiting from Lookout Sir, so making him blatantly stick out of the pack isn't that much of a big deal. And now, on to the big fella. I knew it was big but didn't realise it was this big. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Not only is it huge, but dear God, there's a lot of parts. Oh God, there's more files here than there are stars in the universe. As usual, there's a basic body and you can choose the beastie you're going to create, but unlike the Hive Tyrant, the changes are a lot more detailed and to magnetize, I think you're gonna need to be seriously skilled. Because not only the body and tail, but an important part of the head are the base pieces. So yeah, loads of magnets and a delicate hand would be necessary. So seeing as this is beyond my skill level, I will have to commit to a beastie. Morlock, Trigon, or Trigon Prime. Hmm. The Morlock looks fun with the explode into your midst thing. The Trigon is good, maybe use it to deploy Gene Stealers in the backfield, and the Trigon Prime, providing Synapse as well, tempting. Now, the Moloch pops up, but it gets slaughtered easy. Trigon, still 9 inches away and costly, Trigon Prime even more cost point wise. Anyway, after many a sleepless night pondering this dilemma, my decision was made for me. White Dwarf and the Crusher Stampede. With the Invuln save and wounds counting as models, the Morlock can now pop up, count as 12 models, gets an Invuln save and a damage reduction per hit. Dude, this thing is now the tactics once handled by the Rippers, but now on uber steroids. Deep Strike, dish out a bunch of mortal wounds, steal the objective, and it now has a good chance of lasting long enough to either keep it or reburrow and pop up again. Okay, for the gaps on the joins. The Mr. Dissolved Putty worked a treat. Painting it into the moor and on the back vents erased the join lines really well. Piece of advice though here, be careful. This thing is seriously pointy. Okay, I know I'm supposed to use the smaller claws for the Morlock, but sod it, I'm chucking on the big guns. Now what? Now, again, the big guns. Okay, a quick spray of Primer, and I just have to pose this fellow. It's a beautiful model. Man, I'd have bought it just to have it in my display cabinet. And now, it might be useful, and perhaps competitive again. 
Right, back to the gene stealers. As usual, Zeru's purple on the carapace and claws and talons, the crag blue for the skin, white scar on the gills and tongues, and then some nihilate oxide on top of that. Oh, one addendum. The booklet that comes with the box set has the stats and such, but also this very nice piece of Tyranid art that I think I'm going to scan and chuck on my phone as a background. A nice wash of null oil, and then some dry brushing with what else? Some Gene Stealer purple. It's so damn literal. Anyway, and then some Imeric blue dry brush to highlight the skin and the touch of moot green for the eyes. And then some corn red dry brushed up the scything talons and then a very subtle dry brush touch of Wild Rider red to enhance the edges just a little bit. I brushed on some Elmers and added my stone slate for the base, but I'm not adding my melty biomass this time because they're gene stealers. They are seeking to infect, not to harvest. Okay, so there we go. I'll save painting Mr. Morlock for another one because I think I'm going to get another box of gene stealers and paint them up as well. Get the unit to something like 14 so that hopefully they advance, and with the Swarm Lord's Hive Commander ability, another advance on top of that in the shooting phase. So that's 16 inches plus 2d6 inches, and a charge as well if anyone is within range. Maybe risk metabolic overdrive, because with Catalyst I might be able to soak up any mortals with some luck. Anywho, speaking of Catalyst, hopefully I can keep them at 10 models plus for the extra attack when they get into close quarters. And damn, if I'm over 10 models, I'll spend those two command points to unleash Relentless Flurry. 10 plus models, four attacks, and any roll of a six is an extra hit. Ouch! With Broodlord and Swarmlord chaining Synaptic Link back to the Tyranid Prime, a re-roll to hit as well. But actually, seeing as you can only benefit from one Synaptic at a time, Nah, I think the Mastery of Shadows is wiser. Keep them more durable. Tie up an enemy unit while dishing out some serious trauma while they're doing it. So, the Start Collecting Tyranid box set. It was already rather appealing, but Octarius has made the Gene Stealers and the Broodlord almost invaluable, and now Crushing Stampede has made the Morlock a force to be reckoned with. A grand purchase indeed.